The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning, Bahamas. Good yawning this morning. It is Monday, the 15th of March, 2021, and you're on the clock with Erin Green. On the clock, we engage organizations, institutions, social and cultural leaders, and ordinary people to better understand the impact of public policy, private sector development, and emerging social and consumer trends. On the clock, we have conversations that help us understand and navigate a rapidly changing Bahamas. Today's show is going to be entitled 10 Things the PM and FNM Could Have Been Doing This Weekend Instead of Just Road and Hurting People's Feelings. Also entitled What the PM, the FNM, and the PLP Could Have Been Doing Instead of Breaching COVID Protocols and Lowering the Level of Public Discourse in the Country. My guest today is Cecil Newry, an amateur historian, a paralegal, a poet and writer, a social commentator and political analyst, and a blogger, a social media blogger. Good morning, Mr. Nuri. All my business out today. It's, it's good to be here, especially on your new show. I'm excited about it. Um, I, I welcome you to the national conversation. You definitely have a voice that is important to be heard, and I'm excited to be here today. Yeah. So I want, I want to start the conversation touching on a bit of some things I observed this weekend, right? I observed a lot of things, mm -hmm. especially on the road. On Saturdays, I work um, my produce wide. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of driving. Yeah. So I, Your on, real job. Yeah, on Saturday, but no man, this is my real job. <laughs> Getting on people's nights. Okay. But uh, I spent a lot of time on the road. Watch a lot of cars, a lot of people in their cars and what they were doing. I witness a lot of behavior that I don't want to call reckless and, Right? I want to say that that requires a lot more mindfulness, right? And it got me to thinking about mindfulness and the things that we observe or can observe when we're paying attention to our surroundings, right? And I tell you what I noticed this weekend, and I realize I noticed that mangoes are late, mm -hmm. tamarinds are late, mm -hmm. jujus are late, mm -hmm. and they ain't just late like how the former prime minister used to be late for events. Mm -hmm. Right, these are two and a half months late. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there's something serious. When I say serious, it's something substantive, mm -hmm. right? Something is happening in nature around us, right? And I wondered if other people are paying attention to it. We see the effects of climate change. We see the effects of climate, a planetary shift, right? In the trees, for instance, over the last four years, we've seen that mangoes have gone from sort of pushing out one solid batch of blossoms mm -hmm. to last season, we had four batches of blossoms come yes. out in one season. And right now, today, there are trees with, with fruit on it, mm -hmm. solid fruit you could wrap your hand around, and the same tree is still pushing out new blossoms, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I, you know, I even wonder if we are paying attention to the increased seismic activity Happening around us. Yes, in the Caribbean. Yeah, not just in the Caribbean. And, and feeling it all the way up here no, at north in, in New Providence. Right. And if you live on the northern foreshore, mm -hmm. right near where I live, every week there's an indicator that we may be in, being impacted by seismic activity on a regular basis. When you see the, the regularity with which the infrastructure is damaged or broken in that area. And then it made me think. Remember when we could read the skies and the seas? Mm -hmm. Remember when our ancestors could tell when bad storm was coming? Mm -hmm. They knew when you could go out on the water and when you needed to come back, which side of the island you should leave from and what you should do? When they could read the skies and tell you what's happening on other islands by how the birds are moving, what time of the year? And then I realized that many of us, we can't even read traffic signals. <laughs> <laughs> we can't read what's happening around us and in front of us on the road. And plenty of us don't even know how to read a room. Mm. 
you know. And that became even more poignant for me when I saw the paper this morning. And I saw a beautiful image of a priest blessing the vaccines mm -hmm. until I realized that it was a Christian priest, a priest from a Christian denomination, mm -hmm. blessing vaccines that are intended to be administered to the entire population of the Bahamas. And then I realized not everybody in the Bahamas is Christian. No. No, but not everybody in the Bahamas worships a Christian God. And how would they feel knowing that their vaccines were blessed by a Christian prayer, as opposed to maybe an interfaith prayer mm -hmm. as a compromise, right? Since you won't recognize my right mm -hmm. to freedom of conscience, which includes freedom of thought and freedom of religion. And I thought, how hard is it for these guys to read the room? How is it that over a sh relatively short period of time, we've lost these skills that helped us survive some of the most horrific treatment ever experienced by humans mm -hmm. and help us pull ourselves out of a place of enslavement to a place of self-determination and sovereignty. And in one fell swoop, I realize, what are these people doing? who are getting paid to manage our affairs. Something as, as important, as simple as this, and as important as this, how are you going to convince people to trust you and take this vaccine if you don't even take the time to think through the issues involved with administering the vaccine? I mean, y'all didn't even take the time to think through the optics properly. And so I wonder, in this short period of time, how is it? that we've gone from being able to read the skies and the seas to not even being able to read a room. Perhaps you expect too much from us. No, man. Not these people. Oh, no, not the people, not the people that produce Tony McKay and Sidney Poitier, right? And they see their names that we don't, even, we don't even know about. Their behaviors that are all around the world doing brilliant things, mm -hmm. just sort of undercover. You know, just plodding along, doing their way. Not the people that created the Gilbert Morris, mm -hmm. right? Or Lowell Mortimer, who created the, the Maritime Academy. Mm -hmm. Not these people. It, it's not beyond our capacity for thought, for empathy. Something has gone wrong. So anyway, I didn't realize maybe it, be, it ain't us, Cecil. It can't be us. It's got to be something bigger than us. I think it's a political culture. It's politics. No, I think it's the political culture. The politics is only a small part of the political culture. Mm -hmm. We as Bahamians tend to see the world through several frameworks, right? And predominantly religion, Christianity, yes. the Bible. And there's politics in that. Right. And the family. And there's politics dynamics in that. And then politics. Right? Okay. Social politics. Well, no, political politics. Okay. This is a framework through which we generally navigate the world around us. And as our reliance on the Bible and biblical text and, and scriptural interpretation, as our reliance on those tools to explore the world and understand the world are sort of fading away, right? We haven't necessarily shifted to an academic or a, a scholarship realm, right, where we use academic theory and principles to navigate the world around us. It's like the political culture, right, has filled the vacuum where academics and, and religion have fallen away. So you speak of loftier goals. Just say the, 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 the national anthem. Yeah, You're yeah, speaking yeah. of loftier goals and where we should aspire to, and you find that we seem content of sitting and watching and, and, and enjoying where we are at this present time. Or allowing the political culture to dictate the way that things work in this country. Okay. Right? So you used to let the Bible dictate yes. the way things work in and this country. And we were country. comfortable with that. Right. And, we, and people like me agitate and say things like, look, maybe you bring a different perspective to your interpretation of the Bible to apply it to 21st century issues and concerns in lives, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you combine your theological perspective with an academic perspective 
and find balance in those or juxtapose them and interrogate them to create a framework through which to see the world. But I feel like we have allowed the politicians to tell us how things are supposed to work. So give me an example of that. What happened this weekend that you concluded that this is what <laughs> it is? Because I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Well, I wake in mm -hmm. following COVID protocols, and I get on my phone that I sanitize because I be interacting with customers, and I see both the FNM and the PLP are campaigning. Nothing wrong with campaigning, eh? Yes, in the midst of COVID protocols. But one or two people going door to door isn't isn't breaking COVID protocols. Well, first of all, we were advised to discourage interaction with yes. strangers. Yes. Right? But it wasn't just one or two people in the road. Hmm. It was a sea of red people. It was an ocean. Right. It's a so there are two videos I saw. Yes. In fact, there were three videos I saw. Mm -hmm. One was a group of people lining up outside the FNM headquarters. Mm -hmm. The second was the prime minister speaking to a group of people in a community. Mm -hmm. And the third was, it's like a wave of bread. Mm -hmm. It's just a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. in the road. And then I realized the PLP were doing something similar. Similar. I saw the PLP view too. Were they in the same constituency? Same constituency. Oh, see. So both the PLP and the FNM were in the same constituency. Yes. Right? Campaigning. Campaigning. They got to be against the COVID protocols. It does sound so. <laughs> it, it does definitely sound so. But it, it tells a tale on whether, how we view authority, how we view laws, and how, uh, and how serious COVID is, and how the political directorate determines how we react to things. Clearly, um, once it comes to politics in the Bahamas, the director can say, hey, suspend all the protocols in theory and let us continue with our culture of campaigning. And that's what is happening right now. No, no, no. They that can't, they can't our, wait. our culture dictates COVID. No, no. See, the, politi see, the political culture, right, would tell you that, oh, campaigning is our culture. Yes. But you can't go out and have Junkanoo rush out. No. But Junkanoo is definitely our culture. Mm. Right? And that's a good example, right? The political culture will try to convince you that campaigning is such an integral part of our culture's behaviors that surely we could suspend the COVID protocols for the purpose of campaigning. Yes. Right? But the one thing behemoths are more cultural, culturally attached to than Junknu is politics. 90% of the population, the voting population, participate in, in, in the election, whereas only a small segment actually participates in Junknu. So perhaps polit polit politicking is so important to us, so vital to us, that we are prepared to risk or risk our lives in order to get our fix. Now, I, I would say this, though. 90% of the voting population may vote, but that doesn't mean that they engage in the political culture, A, or B, more specifically, that they engage in campaigning and the politics of it. So, so, I, so I know you started off the show by saying, suggesting the things that the government should do and what the, polit or what the PLP should do, the opposition should do. Well, no, no, what, what both of them, yeah, what yeah, the FNM but, and the PLP but, could have been doing so instead of instead, this. Uh, so instead of walking about, potentially spreading COVID, uh, not socially distanced, ignoring uh, pr the COVID protocols. What should they do in order to still politic and still um, uh, spread their message without putting people's lives at risk? So two things. During the COVID pandemic, certain activities will be suspended due to the nature of the risk involved in the activity and the potential to spread COVID. I'd have just put them on hold. Mm -hmm. I'd have just put them on hold. Kermit, I see we got a call, you there? Call it, just hold the line. We'll be with you in a second. They put it on, you know, you put that on hold. Mm -hmm. What you should have done is used alternate means of communications to engage the electorate, like print media. So innovation then? Yeah, social media, technology, right? But waves of people in the road, 
Waves of people in the road. The goal was to show strength. When you saw that FNM crowd, you were impressed to mm. know that they have that much support in that community. When you saw the PLP crowd, you consider, said, well, this would be a battle. And I, I assume the need to have the prime minister present and then have a sea of his supporters. And, 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 by, and juxtaposed to, the, to the, the PLP, there was a need, a statement had to be in, was, was being made. And the statement is, we are here, we're coming home to take this. I mean, that would be great if, 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 if politics were like a, a, a war, right? Like if, if politics were like it's not a, war. a gang culture. See, if pol political culture is like gang culture, then that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Because that's how you sort of behave when you're in a war. But aren't there other ways that the prime minister could show a strength via support of his constituents, of the constituents in this area? Isn't there another way that he could show strength by delivering to the constituents completed ideas and plans that were promised for that constituency? So what about the people who say, I did not, saw, I did not see my MP. I need to see my MP. My, M, my MP has been missing. Surely there needs to be a fix for that. And, and this is why the, the FNM and the PLP responds how it is. It's a culture that exists where the, the demographics need to be engaged with their MP. You see, this is how, okay, see, this is the thing I have with the political culture now. It's the political culture that suggests to you that seeing your MP or the prime minister for three minutes, right, for three minutes is sufficient time to satisfy that need for communication with the political directorate or with your MP. See, it's the political culture that would fool you into thinking you could spend three minutes with the prime minister and voice all your concerns. Within three minutes. Within three minutes and have them address. But more importantly, like what could they have been doing? Why didn't they have pamphlets and talking points about the virus and behavior and social behavior modification, about the vaccine and the vaccine rollout um, plan or campaign or protocol like, why didn't they use this opportunity? Why didn't they use this opportunity in the community for outreach to address concerns about the vaccine, the state's response to the virus, and the vaccine rollout campaign? Well, you're giving them ideas now. I'm assuming that the next Saturday, <laughs> they'll have the pamphlets ready and, and explain all of that and uh, the vaccine rollout. But I, I guess... Uh, to you, and, and, and understand me so, they missed the ball. They missed the ball, and that they, their culture of the need to win an election overcame everything, all sensibilities, all sensibilities. But now the question is, sh how should the Bahamian people react? Should we be upset? Should we demand more? Uh, or should we be satisfied or say it is what it is? I mean, that's my most, that's my uh, a phrase now I've embraced to answer all things, uh, uh, echoing the commission of the police. It is what it is. All right. So I got a text here, okay. right? And the text says, Aaron, you said no one should be campaigning during COVID. Now, I didn't say that. The prime minister said that. The people responsible for creating the COVID protocol said that and suggested that with the, with the actual restrictions, right? And the text goes on to say, but with all due respect, Aaron, you said spoil your ballot. So I really don't take your advice on anything sensible. And they ended the text with sad, right? So I want to ask the texter, do you really think that's a reasonable comparison, right? Me reminding the state that they themselves said that activities like campaigning should be curtailed or restricted for the time being, mm -hmm. right? And comparing that to a lit political campaign that suggested that vote dissatisfied voters, as opposed to not registering to vote and removing themselves from the electoral process, register to vote, go into the voting booth, and use their ballot to convey a message to said politicians hmm. that they are dissatisfied with. <coughs> Both are attempts. Well, mine is an attempt to shift the political culture. Yes. Campaigning in the midst of COVID after telling your citizens that they have to restrict their own activities mm -hmm. is only further entrenching mm -hmm. that what I think is a terrible political culture that exists. 
it, it, it's actually a commentary about equality and, 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 and evenness. The idea is, in the Bahamas, some people are equal, and some people are just more equal than others. But there's equality. Right. Just that some people are just more equal than the common man. But, but, so here's the thing. Why is it that politicians are more equal than the people they've been elected to serve? Because of the narrative. The narrative is not they are servant, servant leaders of us. We are servant leaders of them. We respond to them and they give us, as a director, they tell us what right. to do. But the politicians created that narrative. Yes. Despite what the Constitution says. Yes. And despite what decades of labor and political agitation would suggest the people expect from them. Mm -hmm. But look here, we got some callers on the line. Kermit, be ready. Caller, you're on the clock. Hey, morning, Ms. Green. Hey, morning. How you doing? I am blessed, ma'am, and good morning to, to I, I call him with the greatest respect, Mr. Critic, because I, 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 like, I like his sentiments when he comes um, to, to, to give his, his views on government. And, 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 see, and scenery, I, I don't agree with you a lot of times, but um, I like how you speak. I, I must give you that respect, sir. Um, Ms. Ms. Green. Yes, sir. The level of, I do, where do I start? First of all, right, do you, would you admit I think you did before, but would you admit that we that that that, that there's going to be an election this year? Boy, look here, it looking more and more like I didn't believe it, but after the, this weekend's activities, you, it it have to be an election because why would you prioritize campaigning over preparing for the vaccine rollout? But the funniest part about this is that the prime minister said on his own mouth he prefer to lose an election than to lose a country. Mm hmm. Right, but Ms. Ms. Green, mm -hmm. in, in, in essence, Stuart, if you really weigh it out on a scale, he loses in both. And, and you know, you know, I, I mean, in the level of politics in this country, um, um, Ms. Green is, is is really going to the lowest. This this, this lap here, this is the, the the lap that I have never seen it with, with Mr. Pinland, with Mr. Ingram, Mr. Christie, the, the the name calling and calling people names and attacking people, families and doing things. It does not make any sense. Yeah. It does not make any sense. But you know something? I want to say this. Mm -hmm. The more the prime minister talks about the PLD, the more more support and the more gain and traction they're, they're, they're gaining. Yeah. I tell you that. I'm oh, yeah. And the, I'm Mr. Neary, let me, let me answer your question, sir. Go ahead. Take a survey and go in Centerville, right? I know a lot of people in Centerville, lots of people, and ask them who are, who are, who are uh, FNM supporters in 2017, Ask them if they were amongst that crowd. You could, you could always in politics. Let me tell you the, the game of politics. Let me, let me, let me help you all about but something. Quick, quick, because I got two callers quick, on the quick. line. Yeah, yeah. Once you're the prime minister or you're the leader, you can always have people behind you. You don't care if you go all the way in Adelaide. You can have people behind you. So don't never believe that all of those persons there are from Centerville. That's mm -hmm. a, that 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 ain't no truth. Y'all have a good day. Thank you very much, caller. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Caller, you're on the clock. Good morning, caller. You there? Caller, you're on the clock. Hi. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, thank you. That's good. Still Hello? there? Yes, yeah, I'm still there. Oh, okay. Listen, I think it's a national disgrace that we have a prime minister who's saying, listen, do as I say and not as I do. Okay? Because that's exactly what he's doing. Okay? He's telling everybody, oh, you have a problem, um, 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 um. Where's your heart? Where's your soul? And all of this, right? Mm -hmm. But you have all of these people, right? I guess to say, well, okay, um, hey, the FNM is strong. I think that was what was what was on his mind when he went to Senate with all them people. Mind you, they are on their mask, but they everybody. Where's the social distancing? Right. The same thing. Do as I say, and not as I do. Right. All right. Um, Go on. He has the law. He has um. He has the police going there, locking up people for not social distancing, right? Mm -hmm. But yet you could walk through there because you have it on your mind that I'm going to show that the FNM is strong and maybe the FNM could win in Santa Bell. I think they were trying to prove a point. But then you can try to prove your point and then after you tell us, okay, social distance six feet, of, six feet apart, Huh? Yeah. You lost your mind? And listen, yeah, because of that, you're going to lose. Anyway, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Listen, 
Um, and what, here's what I want to know. Was the FNM's campaigning a response to the Centerville campaign, right? Which one was first? Because if the FNM decided to go into Centerville after learning that the PLP were going to go in, then this is a sure indication that the political culture is willing to sacrifice the very citizens that they serve, that put them in place for the purpose of winning an election. And, and, and that's uh, something we should investigate and debate over. Um, but this is not the first time that, that the campaigning process of both major political parties has, has, has been critiqued. Mm -hmm. Last weekend, when the PLP had their um, South South or food giveaway, yeah, the, the curbside, curbside giveaway, it was a critique and a yeah. criticism saying, no, 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 it shouldn't be like this during COVID. Mm -hmm. And then we had the 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 FNM had something similar in terms of a party where people came and, and get assistance. And again, there was a critique They're saying during COVID, it sh this should not be happening. Yeah. But again, we see the next week the same thing happened again. Right. So it, it it tells us that perhaps the Bahamian people are not complaining enough or that we are content and satisfied with the status quo and the status quo demands that campaigning must happen. Well, and I, I would word it this way, that the political culture is so overwhelming that people, particularly people in need, right? Yes. Can't figure out a way to operate outside of it and still achieve or get the things that they really need. So how do poor people get help? No, no, we, no. We know poor, poor people must die so mediocre people could live their best lives, Cecil. That answers that. That's what the political culture <laughs> that, say. Yes. And that is our culture but, right now. But yes. listen, I'm going to seriously answer the question right after these calls. Because th that's the most important thing. What can we do and what can poor people do mm -hmm. to, to, to develop agency so that they can operate and, and secure the things they need without participating in a political culture that doesn't necessarily serve them? Yes. Right. So... Carla, you're on the clock. Good morning, Erin Green. Good morning Good to morning. your co-hosts as well this morning. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, I, I just want to say, when the Prime Minister make his national address, mm -hmm. he always talk about, he get his um, form, his emergency orders through health. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he just proved to the nation. Fishivago Lang said, I'll never forget these words, the leader has to be responsible, the country. Mm -hmm. He brought these emergency orders to the people. Mm -hmm. All right? And he has broken it. He always say these words, too. Thank God there's a doctor at the ham. Yep. I'm a doctor. I'm about saving, um, saving lives. Yep. What do you mean you're about saving lives? And you've broken the emergency orders. Mm -hmm. and, and Where is why are you putting the belief the commissioner in a compromising position. Mm -hmm. You have the police going around talking about COVID kind and can, can hire these persons, um, form a COVID whatever task force or whatever that is yes, um, driving these COVID cars. COVID ambassadors. Going around, people perhaps having parties or whatever, locking them up to go before the court. Mm -hmm. He's putting the police in a compromising position. Yep. Well, so no longer the country, no longer they accept his words. When he talk about he um, medical reasons or whatever, he get his, like I form his emergency, I reiterate this, through the medical. But you walking out, you say you saving lives. Where are the lives you saving this day as a gathering? And another thing people like to hold on to, to major part. remember the DNA walk to in the, in the bunch. Yeah. In Pinewood. Ah. You, you, you just have bunch. to say political parties. You always hold on. I talk about your guests. To yes, the two yes. major parties. The DNA. Yeah. And other little center parties like Lincoln Bean, those two. Look at that big what they have on our Bailey Park. Well, we you can't just... Well, one of the things I was going to point out was that it's so important for the prime minister primarily in the FNM lead. And the right and the PLP. And, and, and if the PLP... The or the, or the other parties don't see that it is not no, no medical thing he gets. In, it's just from him. Well, That's how it looks. So therefore, they follow him because it's not from the medical thing. What he's trying to put, put forward to the country is not. Thank you, ma'am. And it is not about saving lives with, with him. Well, you got to listen to him and see his actions. 
It's just a feel good um, when he addressing the nation to make himself look good. But then there's actions after. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. I got another caller on the line. I got to get to. Thank you very much. But listen, this is this this is why it's so important for the prime minister and the state's agents and actors to take the time and practice mindfulness and observe everything going on around them, including how their words are being perceived mm. and processed, right? Because if we look at today's paper, uh, if we look at the Tribune, there's an article titled Health Unions. We've not been consulted, mm -hmm. right? And just to quote quickly from the article, asked about concerns that the government had not brought the CPSA, that's the Consultant Physicians Associ Staff Association, and the Bahamas Nurses Union to the table to discuss the process, Health Minister Renwood Wells said yesterday, quote, the most important persons, close quote, were consulted. There you go. Right? But how could the people who are expected to administer the vaccine and to receive the vaccine in the first phase of administration, uh, ad administering, not be consulted in the process? And how, and more <laughs> importantly, like let's forget the technical side. Yes. How does that make people feel? Yes, yes. Right? Yes, and 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 the feeling, it, it, and I'm, I want to say that it's not, and it's so hard to to say it out in words. There are times that you have good intentions, mm -hmm. good intentions, and the way that you enact the good intentions ruin the entire dish. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I give this analogy of cooking crab. Crab fat needs to go into the, the pot to make the crab and rice. But there's a bit of gall inside there mm -hmm. that bitters the entire pot. No matter how much herbs and, and seasoning you put inside that, 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 crab, that crab, um, crab and rice, once you put that bit of gall inside there, it ruined. And again, the whole thing must be thrown away. And I'm finding that um, this administration and part of the last administration having issues with communicating with the general populace in terms of what it is that we want and what we deserve. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in the process of, of trying to uh, deepen democracy and trying to govern us properly and have a, a better governance, I find that there's a bit of gall in, in, in their attempt to make life, life better for behemoths. Well, and I see a perfect example is the image in today's paper of the, the Christian priests praying over the vaccines. Obviously, it was well intentioned. It was well intentioned. Right, obviously, well intended. Yeah, you ain't you ain't trying to throw no case on people of other. God religions. is going to protect the vaccine. Right. But you refuse to acknowledge a that this is not a theocratic state. It's not. B, no, no, it is not a theocratic state. Where we have the bishop endorsing the the, the vaccine. Two but, bishops, in yeah, fact. But that don't make us a theocratic state. That makes I mean, us the, Christian. The, the, yeah, but the way the Constitution says it, right? Yeah. It don't mean that all of us are Christian. Perhaps and the Constitution is wrong. I mean, the Constitution could be wrong, but I doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that the Constitution is more right than the Prime Minister. There you go. And the leader of the opposition. Yeah. Um, and the chairman of the, of the opposition party. You think he's more right than the chairman of the opposition party? Yes. Could you believe that? That's a bold statement, because you, you know he always right. Apparently so. There you go. O always right. <laughs> But listen, like, oh, I'm so sorry, caller. They mixed, I missed you. Um, but let's get to some text, Cecil, because we got some interesting texts here. Uh, the, the, the text says, we're the PLP social distancing. But listen, I hope by now, texter, you are satisfied that we have addressed both the behavior of the PLP and the FNM. Because if it turns out that the FNM determined, decided that they were having, they were campaigning first, and they got permission to campaign for us, right? Mm -hmm. And then the PLP came behind and said, oh, well, we're going to go there too. Then I got plenty licks for the PLP. But one must also appreciate that media was present. So if media is present, that means they have to be called, eh? And that they were aware beforehand that two big masses, uh, two uh, conflicting uh, entities will be incentivized walking. So this was orchestrated. This was a planned event. But do you think that the PLP and the FNM conspired together? They colluded together <laughs> as See, they, now, that they wanted to work and they both going to work the, and campaign with Incentivel. Regardless of the COVID protocols. Regardless of the pro, uh, COVID protocols because the people of the Bahamas wanted to see that. I mean, that's what the political culture suggests. I think it's because the political culture says that politics is more important than your right to life. And that's subjective. I mean, I guess. 
Uh, we got a caller on the line. Caller, you on the clock? Good morning, caller. You still there? Did I? Oh, Hello? good morning, ma'am. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, good morning. Um, dear, um, I hear people talking about um, the PLP. Yes, ma'am. The competent authority himself, right? Yes. Is breaking the law. Mm hmm. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if that. Listen, if, if there was a club on that street anywhere in Centerville, they could go and have all kinds of people come in now. And the police can't lock them up or nothing or can't do nothing because the competent authority who has set this law is through here with all these people who are not social distancing. You see that? Yeah. You on, hello? Yes, ma'am. I'm right here. I'm listening. Oh, I got you. You see what I'm saying? You are the one. You are the one who set the rule. And you're now breaking the rule. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, and, and so at that time, anybody, anybody in that neighborhood of Centerville could have a big old party. All we got to do is have on our mask. We could be hugging up um, tennis, hugging up and all of that. Listen, the first person you got to lock up is them set who, 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 who come with, with documents because he's the one who set, who set the rules. And see, our people have to learn to think like that. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You set... Do as I say and not as I do. Come on, stop it. Right. Stop it. Thank you, ma'am. Right. And 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 what what horrible optics after the beautiful headline that says I think it says follow our lead. Follow the leader. Follow our lead. Mm -hmm. You know what 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 horrible horrible optics. So what do you expect next week Saturday is going to look like? I, I'm, I'm hearing that they're going to be in Grandstown, you know. Um, you think it's going to be a smaller crowd, both PLP and FNM, as they walk through? Well, first of all, I expect that if they're going to continue to disadvantage the citizen versus the political class in this way, that they will at least set a standard or protocol for but, campaigning. But the standard and the protocol has been set. You just don't appreciate it and accept it. No, the law doesn't appreciate it or accept it. And as someone who is being penalized by the law, I feel called to question why it is in contradiction with the actual law that they created. Mm. But here's what I would like to see. If next weekend you're all going to campaign, then only one party could campaign in one constituency at a time. An agreement? Look, that would have been interesting. I mean, they agree on other things. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about some of the other things. Um, one second. Kermit, is that a new caller? Call is that you still on the line? Yes, good morning. Oh, good morning. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Good morning, Mr. Neary. Uh, you know, Ms. Green, uh, you know, thanks for like listening to the words that actually come out of people's mouth mm -hmm. and then using it against them. I've done the same thing with Dr. Fauci, but apparently the medical pundits over here, they are, they are resisting the new paradigms. And I'm just, I really quote from Dr. Fauci, and I could use that against them because he's being sincere. And so the fact that I'm not hearing on the radio is really disheartening to me. And so even with the statements made by the pundits this morning, it's not about believing, it's about knowing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you want to be, when you want to do good, you have to be fastidious and as truthful as possible to the people. Now, the fact that uh, Doc, Dr. Forbes, you know, I, I wasn't impressed with her because, you know, she stumbled into words. She's not, like, just verbally forthcoming all the time. And so the, the, the thing is, she, she said that the 60 the 70 percent for the herd immunity, but the new paradigm has shifted to 80 per 90 percent, 90 percent, because of the high transmission rate of the new variant. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that I've been talking about antigenic shift, and you don't hear them using these terminologies because they don't want to, they don't want to educate the public. And, and the fact that they're not... See, antigenic shift is something that is ongoing. So the fact that you have antigenic shift, and they're not, there are different types of mutations. They have a neutral mutation, where there's really basically no change. So that means your immune system is still responsive to the phenotype. So the fact that they're discrediting your own natural immune system, saying, now, nah, you had COVID, you... They're already recovered. I know some of my people, I know some people had COVID. They normal now. So what I'm saying is the fact that you're discrediting their own immune system, saying they have to go get, get vaccinated, that's unscientific. They're not talking about antibody-dependent enhancement where when exposed to the real live viruses, the, 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 the in vivo studies, all the animals died. And these things are getting up the Pfizer and Moderna site. Mm -hmm. And you have the other medical pundits online. So the fact that they're trying to control the narrative, but... It's online, and, they, they, and, and you're not hearing it, and they, they just discredit, they're discrediting other pundits who are way more qualified than them and way more well worse. And this is helpful to me. So, you know, who want to take the vaccine, take the vaccine, but I want the public to know 
that they're not, it, it, I've, been, I've been reading for too long, and I, to be brainwashed. You have to juxtapose the Cassius paradigm, the climate change paradigm, the, the attack on the American dollar as the, as, the, as the currency of the world. All of these paradigms shifting together. When you read the Great Reset, these are the things that they haven't planned. The fact that you could be vaccinated for a virus, and still you could contract it later. That's not, with the hepatitis B, when you get hepatitis B vaccine, that one, oh, you can't get hepatitis no more. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. So you... So you, you, you have a vaccine, you're vaccinating the people, but then you keep talking about variants and, and mutation. Hence, a new variant, vaccination. A new variant, vaccination. A new variant, vaccination. This is the type of paradigm that they, it, they're driving now. This is called making a market for vaccine. It was implemented by Bill Gates. All right, there. Um, number 52. Thank you for your contribution. Right? Um, we got to be very careful how we have the conversation around the vaccine and the, our response to the global discourse around the vaccine. One of the things I wanted to ask my guest today is, do you think the prime minister would have, his time would have been better suited if he had spent this weekend creating a unit to address the concerns, right, whether real or perceived, of citizens about a vaccine and what the state's intention is for the rollout of the vaccine. Because surely declaring everything as fake news is no longer sufficient in 2021, generally, and for this particular health issue, specifically. There's definitely a trust issue in terms of governance. Mm-hmm. And, and, and um, that trust issue, either perceived or is a reality, exists. And we see that there are a number of behemoths who are not interested in, in taking this vaccine at all. Mm-hmm. And they and, and when you ask the reason, you find that some of the reason does not make sense. And when you asked ask me, should the company and authority make it a, a greater effort over the weekend in terms of ensuring that people understand what this vaccine is about? Sure. Sure. Because there are persons who would if you give information to would understand what this vaccine is all about and would have embraced it. But Clearly, that is not as important than our culture, which is to to, to campaign. And I, and I believe that moving forward, because it's easy to crit- critique and criticize the prime minister, and we find that there are a number of persons who take advantage of that. Like I, be- yes, but I believe the prime minister means well. I mean, the prime minister we, me, means well, and it's up to the Bahamian citizens to guide him in terms of what it is that he should be doing. I remember that when we were last place in terms of our, of our response to COVID-19, mm. or first to the last. And the Prime Minister came to the Bohemian public and, and said, hey, if you have any ideas, if you have any ideas, bring it forward. And he make a mechanism where you could have put out ideas. We moved from first to last to now being ranked as one of the better countries who responded to COVID-19. That, that uh, credit and, and, and response and that uh, correctiveness is uh, is for the credit of the Bahamian people responding to the uh, to the Prime Minister's demand that we help him. Mm-hmm. Mind you, only he wants to get the benefit of it and say, well, look what I did. You know, it's a matter of trust and, and how competent I am. But yeah. clearly, clearly, the, it, um, we need to now help guide the, the Prime Minister on what to do and how to respond. Absolutely. Well, listen, I got a uh, severe response to that, but that was a great contribution. You guys are going to hear it when we get back from the break. You're listening to 96.9 FM and you're on the clock with Aaron Green. We'll be right back after this break. For the past 33 years, Great Commission Ministries has been defending the poor and hurting, feeding the hungry, and sheltering the homeless. We invite you to support our Live to Give program and make a difference in these challenging times. Become a donor by giving a one-time annual gift or a monthly donation of $50 or $100. Call Great Commission Ministries at 325-5801 for more details. Or visit our headquarters at 237 Wolf Road. Join Live to Give today. This public service announcement is proudly sponsored by this radio station. Always on the go? Miss the show? 
You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. A good yawning this morning. You're on the clock with Erin Green, and we're on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We're also streaming live audio and video on GuardianTalkRadio.com. Or you can listen on TV on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 or on Flow Channel 612. Or you can download the Guardian Radio app for your Apple or Android smart devices and listen to our audio feed or watch us on our video feed right there on the Guardian Radio app. You can text us on the Guardian Radio text line. That's 422-4796. That's powered by BTC and standard text rate supply. Or you can call us at 323-6232. 323-6232, or 326-4259. And if you missed the top half of this show, you can now listen to Guardian Radio talk, sh- uh, talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to www.guardiantalkradio.com and clicking the Podcasts tab. Well, Cecil, it's been a lively conversation. You know we got to get to the, the, second, the second part of this, the most heinous part of the weekend, right? Because these by them were serious. Just road and hurting people's feelings was the activity for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Now, callers, um, s- s- before I come to you, let me just say this. The statements that the prime minister made about the PLP are unacceptable and should not be tolerated by any of us. No matter how you feel about the PLP party as a whole or the individual const- uh, members, uh, the, the MPs, or the constituents and people who voted for them. It's just intolerable. You sound in PLP. The, I'm just, I don't I'm just, have to I, be. I just say it. You know what I, you know what I sound Your like? Your verbiage is kind of PLP-ish. I sound like somebody who has been referred to as a contaminant. In their own country. Now you help me Terry eyed now. I know how it feel mm-hmm. for others to suggest that you and people like you need to be excised and removed for the sake of the country. Hurtful words, yes. They horrible words. And to come from the, the ultimate leader, our leader. Absolutely. At a time when you're supposed to be bringing people together and convincing them that they have to take a sacrifice for the whole of us here now Mm -hmm. and for future Bahamians Mm -hmm. by trusting them and taking this vaccine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, so let's get to the callers. I just wanted to put that out there, callers, in case any of you all wanted to respond to that. You have me thinking. Caller, you're on the clock. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, you know, bad word at the view of this, you know, horrific in itself, and it shows that the campaign is on. And that first the uh, leader, because it always always starts at the leadership. They set the tone. Mm-hmm. They set the tone. So when you're gonna go and you use that word, and then the next day you are contaminating the neighborhood. What does that make you? Mm-hmm. Okay, when you're gonna go, you're the person who had us lock up in these houses for days. Had the young people, the, the young people who are listening, who are watching, okay? My granddaughter will be voting for the first time in this election, mm-hmm. 18 years old. These young people, they listen and they, they take notes. Yes, they do. Understand? Don't think you're going to be able to, to swing these young people and citizens the way they have been getting swung for so many years. Oh, yes. You understand? So yes, ma'am. Then you're going to go and you use that word contaminant, and then you're going to tell us if you want to live, you stay home. If you want to die, go out. I remember those words. Yep. This thing is still here. This pandemic is still among, among, among us. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Then you're going to stand over two boxes 
with 20,000 um, um, vaccines, vaccines doses, in yeah. it. And what is our um, population? 400,000, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they own, only, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, the selective few. I don't know if the other 30 is going to come and when it's going to come. Oh, yeah. So when you're going to go and you're going to march about and bounce around in these small, because those streets are so narrow. Mm -hmm. I don't hardly see any people who live in those communities out there. Yes. You so said you're going to come to my door after you surround yourself with, with, with each other. And I'm going to say this in reference to the opposition and the DNA, to both opposition parties. Yes. They're all doing it. Right. The political culture overwhelms and consumes all parties. But see, but when you're the competent authority and when we have a crisis going on in this country, because guess what? I've lost loved ones due to COVID. Yes, ma'am. Don't come tell me after you then go on and spread Ramachu Red Tennis. Because this was happened, this didn't happen on Saturday. This happened in Golden Gate, where he led to see, uh, is it different that these other persons may be trying it? But then you're going, and then you're going to have police security. Oh, the wow. The very same police officers who are, uh, are, are in, uh, enforcing these, these laws, locking people up, giving people citations, mm -hmm. where we have to find almost up to $2,018 to pay fines because of us breaking the COVID um, yes, rules. When you have a party bus with five people in there trying to, to breed, you're going to give them citations. And yet you have the competent authority who's supposed to be overseeing this um, COVID and us. Uh, and vaccine you know, rollout. Better. And, you know, you say, but give the prime minister or give him the credit for doing what he did. So that we can have the lower numbers. We as the people are doing this because we don't want to get sick and we don't want to, want to die. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to bury any of our loved ones. So, um, Mr. Competent Authority, don't, please don't insult me by telling me one thing, you're doing something doing else. Another. And then you're going to say, you're going to have a service. But in memory of the persons that we have lost yes, in the COVID, then your, your actions are telling me otherwise. otherwise. And I implore the opposition, come up with a different um, 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 strategy. Um, we have to come up with a different strategy in order to go, because you and those those neighbors being so clustered. I, look, I just see that, that, that post, you know, the, the, the COVID thing with the red blotches, and that thing is so scary. I yes, just see it building it because all of us, those houses that you walk through that corner, they may not even have running water. I understand. You understand me? So I just wanted to say that because it really bothered me. Yes, ma'am. What I saw with the, with the invasion, and it's going to keep coming. Please don't come to my own. Yes, ma'am. Let them know. Put a don't sign come. up. Put a sign up. Don't come. Thank you very much. Thank I got a couple much. more callers before we go. Caller, you get 30 seconds. You're on the clock. Still there, caller? Yeah. We yes. call today's you know, voice along with you and your guests. Good morning. Uh, I want to make three quick points. Number one is I think especially all Auckland's people should put Glennis Hannah Martin back in the House of Assembly because she works for the people. You know what I'm saying? And you don't, you don't hear any immaturity about her. Secondly, right, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Dr. Forbes, I, this morning I listened, I think she was dancing around. She didn't give us the reason or give us what are in the... Uh, the the uh, the medication right mm -hmm. and everything she said is from what she got from the international people. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Um, uh, my last point is mm -hmm. right. I'm a. Uh, I'll, I'll listen to um, uh, Doctor mm -hmm. Sands also, right? Mm -hmm. What what he got to remember is that uh, nobody know uh, the chemical charge that what is putting out what is saying in people's brain. So uh, when, he, when, he taught, when he said that Dwight is foolishness pertaining to um, uh, uh, Bill Gates, he shouldn't say those kind of words to be a doctor. And I love him and respect him. You know what I'm saying? Right. But always remember, you don't know what people are thinking in their head. I got you, sir. Thank you very much, Brayman. I don't have any more time for callers. I'm so sorry, callers. We're going to pick up this show later in the week. I'm going to read some of these texts. Uh, Aaron Minnis out there shaking hands on the campaign during COVID, but with all due respect, oh, you said spoil your ballot, so you're not taking my advice. That's okay, cuz spoiling the va ballot may have been the most effective political recourse that any of us have engaged in in the last 35 years. Because if you think these people could hear your voice over the sound of the political culture, you may be mistaken. 
right? And don't think I didn't forget that I forgot the response of the chairman of the PLP party to the Prime Minister's statement, right? And dear sir, Mr. Mitchell, please stop. It was unnecessary. Leave it to us to engage the Prime Minister on these horrible and intolerable um, statements. Please, you follow Michelle Obama. When they go low, you go high. Don't go lower. No, let no. The, the political advocates engage the political behavior and culture. Can I see your top lip? Because look here. No, no, you can't say that. What about your mouth? No. In fact, thank you, Kermit, for not cutting me off. You are not allowed to talk about people's mothers or relatives in this dispensation. At all? And all right-thinking Bahamians need to stand up and demand that. In fact, it ain't no more collect, ain't no more drinking, ain't no more partying until we get the political class and the political culture sorted and understanding that they do not have a right to govern at the expense of Bahamians and ordinary people. Anyway, Bahamas, I kept you long. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. You've been tuned into On the Clock with Aaron Green on 96.9 FM. And coming up next is Levan Miller and Unleashed. Have a great day, Bahamas. Mm-hmm.